بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله عز وجل وخير هد هدي رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أحباب الله as we ready ourselves to pray Isha in just a bit um, the new norm for us is what we are seeing of being isolated secluded as families within our homes as far as larger society we're basically in lockdown as of tonight in Dallas County. Um, no one except for the exceptions are allowed to really be outside and to be functioning at their places of work. Many other states, as we have heard, have already had the National Guard called in, California, New Jersey, and who knows where else and what else is going to be next. Um, Ahbabullah, I'm not saying this to, to frighten us, uh, although to be frightened is a good thing. Part of what this fear for us should be is that it brings us closer to Allah Rabbul Alameen. That this fear um, is a testament, a testament to those who they truly have the greatest comprehension of Allah Azza wa Jal's greatness. Aziz Jalla Jalal who says, إنما يخشى الله من عباده العلماء. Certainly, the only people who have reverence and awe for Allah are the knowledgeable, the scholars. And we ask that Allah Taala truly bless us to be scholars and knowledgeable of Him, such that the awe and reverence of Him Subhanahu is what fills our hearts and our souls. Ya Ahbab, as we are looking at the data that is being given to us, we see that the United States has reached third place in the world with regards to corona, the corona disease or COVID-19 disease, the coronavirus uh, caused by the coronavirus. Yahbab, I wonder, and I don't know if I'm alone and wondering and reflecting on this, but what is it that Allah Rabbul Alameen maybe wants us to learn from this? Because we have to be certain that all of this is Allah's kingdom. And believe it or not, even this most microscopic of a virus that can't be seen with the naked eye, that requires the latest of technology of electron microscopes or, or whatever they may be of the highest caliber of microscopes and staining 
to be able to see this novel corona virus. Something that is so minuscule, something that is literally invisible to the naked eye, yet we see that it has ground the world, all governments to a halt. Why would Allah Rabbul Alameen allow for something like this to take place? We know that everything of what He does, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and everything of what He allows, Jalla Jalalu, that there is wisdom in it. That there is certainly wisdom in it. And it's for each person as an individual to reflect and to derive what they can of personal benefits and lessons as a family, for families to engage in meaningful discussion and to have uh, in-depth introspection as families, as communities, and at every level with regards to organizations, businesses, government, every level. I would like to think that if we were to truly ponder and think about what Allah Rabbul Alameen may want us to learn. I want to just mention one thing and this was based off of a conversation that I recently, very recently had with a dear brother. When we look back at history throughout the different epidemics and plagues that became pandemics that started in the West and there was another that afflicted uh, young adults there was another that afflicted uh, pregnant ladies. And interestingly, this one, the COVID-19 disease, it seems that it's especially targeting the elderly. The elderly. Now, we can't change this. We are doing our best through social distancing, through hygiene and all but what type of message could it possibly be giving to those of our older brothers and sisters, those who could be the age of our parents, perhaps grandparents, or some of you may already be within that age group of whatever, 60 and older. What lessons can we learn? What is it that Allah can perhaps be telling us? Well, not to sound morbid, but let's be honest. The greatest mortality rate from this disease is for that group which typically is considered to be the highest uh, probability as far as rates are concerned for death anyway. Most of the time we don't expect younger folks to pass away, it's the older folks. So why this double whammy if we can use that expression? I would want you to think about it, for you to go ahead and perhaps give some suggestions of why. Talk about it among yourselves as families, as older parents with your children and maybe grandchildren. But here's what I'd like to perhaps maybe offer, whether I'm right or wrong, Allah only knows. But it's to set an urgency for us, an urgency in so many different ways. One of those urgencies is for us to cherish those of our family that are older, thereby becoming all the more vulnerable. To cherish them and stop taking them for granted because we don't know whether or not they're going to make it through this pandemic. To cherish them each and every day, to value them and make them feel that they are loved, that they are special, that they mean so much to us. The second thing is for the elderly themselves to live with a sense of urgency and that is to truly love those who are younger than them. To be the most beautiful person around them so that everyone is going to love you in their presence. Not that you're going to be the one who is hypersensitive and may be difficult to deal with because you complain about too much and you're still who knows what of this or that, such that kids and grandkids and others find you to be a burden instead of a blessing. Live in the moment. Don't sweat the small stuff. Connect with the people that are in your lives that 
are there for you, that do love you and care about you. Don't allow for culture, traditions, and expectations, and all sorts of other things to be factors that are getting between us. A third thought is that with our elderly, there is so much that is going to pass away with them if we don't get it from them. Many of our elderly have been through the time era of World War II. With that, they have seen whether they've been here in the States or come from abroad. They have been through World War II and what that meant of the, the uh, financial issues in the economy, depression, uh, recession, uh, insecurity, you name it. You name it. And if they came to America, what that also meant of challenges and sacrifices of leaving home and family and trying to start things anew here, skills, experiences, life, that instead of us caring so much to watch TV and Netflix or whatever it is that we're watching, to really get to learn about not these fake characters in, in, in movies, but to know about the people that Allah has given to us in our lives. And believe it or not, the stories that our grandparents and our parents have lived, they're far greater and far more fantastic than what you may have of fiction through movies and books because it's real. And not only that, but because they're your relative and being able to hear what their experiences were, you're a byproduct of that, to be connected to them through those experiences. And in doing so, Ya Ahbab, if we can as families sit and listen at the feet of our elders, uh, imagine three generations of grandparents, parents, and grandchildren being present all together. What that does to connect us, to help us to see how we are all interconnected and to learn. To learn because life experience is one of the greatest ways that we learn and what a person has experienced. If we can learn from what they have to offer, it is far greater and far better than what we may on our own. Stumbling through trial and error What we're going to have to pay of the price And of time and of the costs as a whole um, Here's a fourth thing that I'll mention A fourth thing Is that for those folks Who are this older generation um, To think about And again nobody knows when we're going to pass away It could be somebody who's 30 years younger than them That goes before I can pass away before somebody who's double my age. Only Allah knows this. And this is why everybody should be doing this, but especially those who are older as we see that this, this pandemic is especially targeting the elderly. Are you ready to go back to Allahu Rabbul Alameen? Are you prepared to go back to Allahu Azawajal? Do you feel, do you believe that Allahu Azawajal is satisfied with you? And... What can you give of evidence to back up that feeling, that belief that Allah is pleased with you, that He's satisfied? Um, here are some things that a person can look at in case you're thinking that, you know, uh, I don't know how to tell. Uh, part of it is this. We know that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, طُوبَ لِمَنْ طَالَ عُمْرُهُ وَحَسُنَ عَمَلُهُ there are glad tidings for the person that has been blessed with long life to reach an older age and throughout that they've done good deeds. To ask yourself, to look at yourself and to try to, to, to pinpoint out things of good deeds. What have you done? And it's one thing, ya ahbab, that you say that alhamdulillah I make my five daily prayers. Alhamdulillah, in addition to that I pray the sunnah of extra prayers. Alhamdulillah, I fast Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, I may fast extra days here and there. Alhamdulillah, I read the Qur'an. All of that is beautiful. But think about it from a different perspective. Think about it from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ wherein he said, خَيْرٌ nasi أَنْفَعُهُمْ nas." That the best person is the one who's the most beneficial to the people. And when we think about that, Ya Ahbab, 
Let's not forget that he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Wabda bi man ta'ul. You must begin with those who are under your guardianship, those whom you have an obligation to, to, to be there for and for them to be the recipients of all that is beautiful and good from you, your family. In our families, ya ahbab, and again, I'm especially talking to our older brothers and sisters. And I'm speaking to you from the position of love for you and respect for you. Uh, nothing less than that, admiration for you. But sometimes in the way that we may have been raised, we've had parents that were authoritarians, that were dictators in the home. That maybe the mother, you didn't hear a peep out of her, and the father was this uh, mean, uh, strong person where whatever he said went, and there was no talk, there was no communication, there was no love. And all too often, many of us, we become like our parents if we don't do our part to deliberately learn a better parenting style. So my older brothers and sisters, in your homes, are you loved or are you feared? Are you respected or are you avoided? Think about that. Are you a person who your personality and character is pleasant to be with? Or are you abrasive? Your good deeds, the best of who you should be in benefiting, it should be with your families. And outside of your family, whoever else, whomever else you're able to do good for. And naturally, as we are doing uh, whatever we can to please Allah Rabbul Alameen and show Him our love because that's what ibadah, worship is for us is how Allah Jalla Jalalu wants us to show Him our love <coughs> Now when everybody who's watching the video runs away because I coughed, right? <laughs> um, but going back to the serious note when we're looking at how we're able to truly be selective in the good that we do. This is where we especially want to pay attention to as al jariya those continuous charities. And this is why, Ahbab, especially our older brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, you have raised your kids, you have educated them, they've gotten married and started their own families, their kids are Alhamdulillah older, perhaps already in college and maybe even established in their careers. You yourselves, when that time comes that you pass away, whatever you have worked hard for of material things in this world, how much of it are you leaving behind, bequeathing to the masjid, bequeathing to an institution that is going to be a continuous charity for you? And to be very uh, honest and frank, we know that within other faith traditions of, of the Jews and Christians especially, this aspect of planned giving is something that is huge and it is normal. That's one of the main things that boards do is the main function for boards and most non-for-profits even in religious institutions. <coughs> is to uh, work the relationships that they have so that they could have folks who are going to donate and donate on a planned basis that is going to be continuous and to even have these difficult conversations so that a person can place within their will and bequeath within their trust a portion to, in this case for us, the masjid. In this case, for an Islamic institution that is there to serve for many, many years to come, thousands upon thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of people throughout the course of its existence. Uh, brothers and sisters, as we look at IANT having had its 40th anniversary, 4-0, and we think of how many people have come through the door, have made sada, have worshipped Allah have attended prayer by themselves or in jama'ah, or taraweeh in Ramadan, has read Qur'an, has worshipped Allah in all the beautiful ways that the Messenger has taught. 
Think about those folks who have given to establish IANT and have given to maintain IANT. How much they're able to receive and will continue to receive. So I'm encouraging you, especially for our older brothers and sisters, please take this as a time to consider seriously placing IANT within your will. We know that the Prophet ﷺ said, a thuluthu thuluthu kathir, that a third of your wealth is permissible even though that's a lot. See what you can give. Can you give a third? Can you afford it? Especially that all of your children are alhamdulillah, well established. And this money that you have, it's all going to be extra spending money for them. Do something to truly better help yourself. Give on behalf of yourself, your spouse, your parents. <coughs> Give. Give before it's too late. The last point that I'll mention, it's the fifth. It's the fifth. And this is something for us to think about. What succession planning is there in our institutions that are still predominantly held by and ran by those who are considered to be that older generation? How much have we really done to prepare our organizations and our institutions to groom and to mentor and to be welcoming and inclusive for our younger brothers and sisters who are alhamdulillah, perhaps equally educated and qualified, perhaps even better in some cases. This is a challenge that many an institution, our Islamic institution faces and it's not an Islamic uh, issue, rather it's cultural issues, tribalism. But this is another thing for us to really pay attention to. Look at our boards, for example, whether it be a masjid, whether it be an Islamic school, whether it be whatever. How many of these folks are under 50 years old? From those, how many of them are both males and females? How many of them are females? Um, this is something for us to really take to heart. Because if and when our younger generation has not been incorporated, they have not been made stakeholders in their own future and in the future of these same organizations that we claim we are maintaining because of them, <coughs> what's going to be left if and when this disease that continues to ravage and it's still just the beginning from what we're hearing. That it takes out our elderly that have been running our masajid, our Islamic schools, our humanitarian or institutions, whatever the case is. And our younger folk uh, have not been involved. So everything of data keeping, of, of, of information sharing, it's not going to be there. Imagine that if and when, and they will stand up forward, they will come to, to, to live up to what is expected and what is required of them. But how will they do a good job when they're, they're being expected to start from scratch? It's like a person who starts a new job taking over from somebody and nothing is given to them from their predecessor. Nothing. They have to start from zero. This is an opportunity, brothers and sisters, for us to really think about these difficult subjects, to have these serious conversations, and to truly be humble before Allah Azza wa Jal to show humility by making better decisions. By making better decisions as individuals, by making better decisions together as families, by making better decisions together as a community for the well-being of our families, of every individual. So that when we do go back to Allah Azza wa Jal, whether it be during this or because of this plague or otherwise, that we can say with a sense of certainty that I know that I've done my best sincerely emulating what the Blessed Messenger Ali Salatu Salam demonstrated for us. Therefore, I can feel in my heart genuinely and honestly that Allah is satisfied with me. And I pray that Allah truly bless us to be from them. As I close in dua, do feel free to join in. يا الله يا أرحم الراحمين يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا سميع يا مجيب 
Ya Allah, we call upon you, Rabbil Alameen, and it is only you that we ever call upon. Mm. Ya Allah, you are the most beautiful, you are the most merciful, even during times like this one, it is hard for us to see and to understand. Ya Allah, we ask you, Rabbil Alameen, as you are the guide, that you guide us and keep us guided. Ya Allah, guide us so that everything of our beliefs and our understanding will be correct. Mm. Ya Allah, guide us such that through those correct beliefs and understandings, We'll live our lives and continue to live our lives in a way that is good with you, Ya Allah. Mm -hmm. That you will be pleased with us, Ya Allah. Mm -hmm. That you will love us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And that you will take us back to you with forgiveness and mercy awaiting us. Mm -hmm. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you help us all as individuals, as families, as organizations, as communities. Ya Allah, as the human race to learn all that you would have us learn of lessons from this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen, as you are the teacher of all knowledge and wisdom, teach us from it. Ya Allah, help us to learn all that is going to be beneficial for us and for each other, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Allah, so long as you grant this life, Ya Allah, bless us to live it in the way that is most meaningful and most significant. Ya Allah, and when you take us back to Ya Allah, let it be that you take us back full of faith. Ya Allah, granting us the best of paradise without accountability and without punishment. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you heal all who are afflicted by this and by any other disease. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen as you are the healer, that you thoroughly and completely and quickly heal them, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that through this you turn humanity back to you. Ya Allah, guide us back to you. Ya Allah, keep us firm upon the straight path of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you guide us and that you keep our priorities straight. Ya Allah, and that you bless us such that we never waver thereafter. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you continue to guide and help the leadership of the world as a whole in this war against Corona, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, guide them and help them so that they can work together in ways that are going to put a quick end to this pandemic, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you answer these prayers for us. Mm -hmm. Ya Allah, and that you do not reject them because of our insubordination. Mm -hmm. That you do not reject them because of our insolence. Mm -hmm. Ya Allah, that you do not reject them because of our arrogance. Mm -hmm. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen because of who you are. Ya Allah, that you answer these prayers mm -hmm. and that you do not reject them because of who we are. Allahumma rabbana ameen Allahumma ameen Allahumma ameen Wa salli allahumma wa sallam Wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad Wa akhiru da'wana Anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen